Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the reticular formation, the introduction to the reticular formation in just five points, so that it is easy for us to understand and we can grab the material. First point: reticular formation is complex network of neurons extending centrally in the brain stem. So this reticular formation is present centrally in the brain stem and it is extending from the medulla to the top of the mesencephalon. So if you look at the diagram that this is the reticular formation which is present centrally and it is extending from medulla to the top of midbrain. So this is the first point. The second point is regarding its function. It is involved in regulation of respiration, cardiovascular function, muscle tone, the level of consciousness and the appropriate motor response to sensory stimuli. That means that reticular formation as it is a collection of neurons, dense neurons, it forms various nuclei and by virtue of those nuclei it, it is performing various functions of control or regulation of various sy systems like respiratory cardiovascular, muscle tone and other consciousness. One of the most important role of reticular formation is maintenance of consciousness and the sleep-wake cycle. Coming to the third point, if we want to see the anatomical aspect of reticular formation, structurally the reticular formation is subdivided into three main columns of nerve cells ok so that centrally presenting collection of neurons or dense neurons are now divided into three main columns what are those three main columns first is unpaired raphenuclei ok so the medial the midline column is the unpaired raphenuclei and then there occurs paired two other columns what are those paired columns that means bilaterally they are present the medial column just beside the unpaired raphenucleus which is made up of magnocellular cells ok and that is why it is called as magnocellular nuclei or magnocellular neurons and that is why it is called as magnocellular nuclei and the third is the paired lateral column which is present laterally to the medial column that is the parvocellular nuclei it is also called as parvocellular because it is made up of smaller size neurons ok so parvocellular nuclei in this diagram you can see the example this blue nucleus which are the collection of various nucleus present from the medulla to the mesencephalon is the midline raphenucleus from here there is presence of just lateral to the midline nucleus there is collection of various cell body or there are various nucleus which are the medial column nucleus and then the green color collection of nuclei are the lateral column nucleus. So as you can see this is a gigantocellular or magnocellular nucleus and these are the parvocellular nucleus. The example of the parvocellular nucleus are the central nucleus of pons and medulla. Okay. So these are the three columns the midline medial column just lateral to it the medial column and lateral to that is the lateral column and these are the various nuclei of those columns. So the fourth point is there are extensive connections between reticular formation cells and the ascending tracts from the spinal cord which is suggestive of its integrative activity of the reticular formation. Okay, And coming to the last point is there is something called reticular activating system or also called as ascending reticular activating system which is a complex polysynaptic pathway ok polysynaptic pathway that projects diffusely from the brainstem reticular formation to the cerebral cortex ok so this is the diagram of the reticular formation and polysynaptic pathway which is synapsing in the thalamus the non-specific nuclei of the thalamus and then going to the non-specific projections to the cortex. By virtue of this reticular ascending system, the function of consciousness, wakefulness and alertness is performed by the uh, reticular formation and also that it influences the EEG patterns in the brain. So this is how we can understand the introduction of reticular formation in five points. Thank you.